Studio mode in OBS seems crazy complex, but it's actually crazy simple. Click the studio mode button down here in the bottom right hand corner. I'll walk you through this. It's so easy and you may love it because it allows you to edit content in real time as you are live streaming or recording without your audience seeing you fiddling around on the back end. Here's the orientation. Think of the left hand side as the kitchen. You're cooking stuff up over here. You're editing it. You're queuing it up. And then think of the right hand side as the dining room. <laughs> what everybody can see out in the dining room, the final food that's being served. You can do whatever you want in the kitchen and your customers and your viewers don't know what's going on there. You then use the transitions in the center to punch in the content from the kitchen into the dining room. It's that easy. And no one knows if you screwed up or whatever you did when you were messing with your content as long as it's on the left hand side. And as soon as that content is ready, you transition it in and punch it in on the right hand side. So what I'm going to show you right now is a classic transition. I'm going to click the fade button and boom, there it is. It faded the content from the preview on the left hand side, the kitchen and this analogy to the dining room on the right. And you can fade the content back if you'd like or cut it back by clicking the cut button and it swaps the content on either side. Now, the reason why it's happening in this very intuitive way is I've changed some settings here using this gear cog. Follow along with me. Click the gear cog, enable duplicate scene, enable duplicate sources, and make sure swap preview output scenes is checked. And so what that allows you to do is fully edit everything over here in the kitchen in the preview window before you punch it in to the program window every single thing, every single source, every single scene. And what's really, really important is if you want to edit a piece of content that is currently live, you can edit it with those settings without your audience seeing it. Check it out. See the image on the left hand side. If I wanted to, I could resize it. I could oversize it. I could do whatever I want. I could even add other content over here on the left hand side. The audience has no idea what's going on in the kitchen. And then whenever that is finished and ready to be punched in on the air, I can click the transition button and it'll punch in the edited version to live on the air over here on the right. Pretty cool, huh? But wait, there's more. There's also some other transition options like this classic fader right here. You can fade slowly to the new content if you want. That's old school video editor style stuff. Pretty awesome. And also you have extra transition options such as fade to black, and you can choose the duration of how long it takes to fade to black with each one of these fades, similar to any other type of transition in OBS. The higher the number here, the slower it fades, the lower the number, the faster it fades. It's quite simple. So as you can see, all of your different transitions are on a hotkey like cut, fade, or fade to black depending on what you want your transitions to be. Cool, now wait, there is a few other settings that you need to be aware of when it comes to studio mode that may make your life easier. Click the settings button down here in the bottom right hand corner and we're going to go to the general settings in OBS and choose the ones related to studio mode. Scroll down the general settings page to studio mode and there's a couple things you may or may not want to enable. So one is transition to scene when double clicked. So instead of having to hit the transition button like I did, you may want to just tap, tap and punch in that scene. Let's enable that. I'll show you what it looks like. Also, there's a portrait vertical version of this instead of horizontal. If you prefer that, sounds good. And you can turn on and off your program and preview labels. I prefer to leave them on. So hit apply. As you can see, it switched it to vertical mode. If you wanted to use it vertically, if that's more, uh, let's say, intuitive for you, or you want to resize your OBS and scooch it over on the side of your monitor like this, then you can do exactly that. And it'll show you you punching in the content in and out the same way here, which is really neat. And then, as you saw a moment ago, I enabled double clicking the scene to transition into it. So if you double click the scene, like over here in the bottom left hand corner where it says the scene name, watch this, double click. Boom, there it is, it punched in. Sorry, I was punching in the wrong scene. Double click, and there it is, it punches it in. That is studio mode in a nutshell. There is so much more you can do with studio mode if you're interested. 
I've run multi-million dollar webinar events using Studio Mode to do lots and lots of very complicated things. If you're interested in me helping you with your OBS, your YouTube strategy, your streaming strategy, I'm here to help. AWOLdigital.com, go to my website, select your time, enter your information and pay, and boom, I'm on a one-on-one -on -one video call with you, helping you with your technology, social media, and online broadcasting needs in an instant. Best of luck.